Hi everyone, and welcome to the long-awaited tutorial on how I show you how to make a dragon hat. This is the one right here I will be showing you how to make, and it is all crochet, so you need to know how to crochet before you start this tutorial. If you would like this dragon hat, this one I'm holding right here, I am doing a giveaway on Instagram, and it is free to enter, so go to Instagram. I can give this to you for free and it can be yours. I have a written pattern for this as well, and if you would like to purchase the written pattern that's available on my website, I would appreciate if you could. That'd be really nice. Months of work went into creating this pattern and standardizing it. There's a lot of different elements. It was very difficult to put together, but we did it. We're here and now we're gonna make it. Like two videos ago, I said I wasn't gonna make it. Now I'm making it and you're like, wow, such a hypocrite. No, I'm like easily bullied into making things. <laughs> Just kidding. I feel like I have no agency over my art right now. And I'm sure a lot of artists have also gone through this where you don't really feel like you own your piece because so many people are creating it. And I figured, okay, whatever. Might as well teach people how to create it properly. I really hope that Chinese manufacturers don't use this video to start manufacturing a bunch, that would suck, but oh well, here we are. If you'd like to support me and support future things and projects like this, more patterns and stuff, then you can buy my pattern, please. I'm not gonna ask you to, but like, it's, it's out there, it's available. So I just wanted to quickly talk about the history of this piece. I made the first one February 3rd, 2022. That one didn't have a mustache. That's the original Silver Dragon. I made a bunch of pieces as a part of a series for my undergrad thesis, for my BFA. It was called Dim Sum at the Silver Dragon. I made a bunch of crochet headwear based off of my grandparents' restaurant called the Silver Dragon. It's no longer open, so don't look for it. My mom's family immigrated from Hong Kong when she was young, and my grandparents opened up a restaurant. It closed in 2010. I have a lot of fond memories there, and I wanted to create a bunch of pieces based off of it, and that's how the Silver Dragon original hat was created. I didn't make the second dragon until like November, December 2022. I got a commission to make it in white. That's the one where the photos kind of went viral and then everyone started copying it. If you're curious about the whole people copying it, Sheen copying it situation, I have a couple more videos on my YouTube channel about that. I would just like to preface this tutorial. This is a lot of hand sewing. A lot of hand sewing. If you don't know how to hand sew, I would say mm, maybe steer clear of this. Also, I crochet fast in the tutorial. If you don't know how to crochet and this is your first time crocheting something, I am not going to teach you each stitch. I am just going to go for it. You have to know the stitches and the really basic stitches too. One more thing I would like to add, this is not a sellable pattern. So if you make this and you list a bunch on Etsy, mm -mm, no, no, this is for personal use only. Now, there are some exceptions and I will tell you one right now. For example, your friend is like, hey, this person I like made this pattern. I want this dragon hat. I don't know how to crochet, but you know how to crochet. And your friend asks you, I'll pay you to crochet this. Then yeah, you deserve to be compensated for your time and the materials. But if you're making a bunch to sell them online, no, mm -mm. big no, no, no. Don't start making them with the intention to sell them everywhere. That is not the purpose of this, okay? Okay, I think that's it. Before we get started, I wanted to talk about yarn and hook size. This is the Wonder Woolen by Handmaiden Fleece Artist and it's 100% Canadian wool. They're a small brand from Halifax, Nova Scotia and I use them a lot, like a lot, a lot for almost everything. I just wanna say this is not sponsored. I just really love the wool, it's like so, so soft and it's really durable, really great. I love it so much, that's why I work with it so much. And I'm using a four millimeter crochet hook. This yarn is kind of on the thicker side. Um, if you just get like, I would call this a medium four weight, but um, compared to other medium four weights, it is on the thicker side. Usually um, I would recommend using a five millimeter crochet hook because that's more appropriate for this, but I like my stitches to be tighter and I like things to be closer together. That's why I'm using a smaller hook size. Now I will link this below. I'm not sponsored. I just want to be transparent with you guys and we, yeah, let's get started. So there's the ugly knot on the end. Um, I'm just going to do a slip knot and then chain three and then slip stitch into the top of that chain three. Now you can um, just use a magic circle, but this is just what I prefer to do. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is the small horn. I should have said that first. So we're going to chain one and then half double crochet eight times into the circle we've created. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. Now you can kind of see the first stitch we did, which is the first out of the eight, is right there. And I like to do a slip stitch into that one. And um, yeah, that's just what I do. If you have a different way of connecting, you know, your rounds, do that. Totally up to you. This is just do what's comfortable for yourself. So I like to do a slip stitch here and then I chain one and then instead of starting in the next stitch I like to jam one stitch in there and then skip the one back here if that makes sense. As long as you have eight stitches that's all that matters just do what you're comfortable with. For the next eight rows um, we're just going to half double crochet around which isn't the most exciting but I like to get the boring large things out of the way. So once you've finished your small horn, you're going to want to repeat that one more time. So you have two. Alright, so let's get started on the big horn. And I usually like to do a slip knot, and then I crochet three. And then a slip stitch into the first one. You can do a magic ring, or yeah, magic ring or magic circle, whatever you want to call it. This is just what I prefer to do. After that, I'm going to chain one and then half double crochet eight times into that circle we created. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, and then we're going to slip stitch into the, the first one we did. Then for row two, we're going to one half double crochet and then increase in the next one. So one, increase, one, increase and I have a lot of people telling me in my other tutorials that like oh you're going way too fast or the way you're holding it is like hard to see sorry but this isn't a tutorial on how to learn how to crochet you got to know how to crochet before you do the actual crocheting things so if you're having trouble following along I would recommend like following the pattern or um, familiarizing yourself with other things more and I'm not trying to be rude that's just that's just how it works. I'm not going to go any slower than this because that would just be painful. All right, so after I'm done that one, I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that one. That is the top of our big horn. And for the next five rows, we are going to half double crochet in each stitch. I just finished the five rounds. Now we're going to half double crochet three and then increase. So one, two, three, increase. And we're gonna repeat that three times, which will give us a total of 15 stitches. One, two, three. One, two, 
right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, slip stitch into that first stitch, chain one, and five more rows of half double crochet. I'm done my five rows and this is the first horn. You're gonna repeat this one more time so you have two horns. We're gonna be working in this like long chain and you'll kind of see this is like a repeating thing. But we're gonna do the largest one and then we'll work to the smaller ones. So you're going to wanna chain 16. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and we're going to be working around like that, um, and you'll see. Then we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then we're going to double crochet along here, and that is going to be 15 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 15, there's our 15 stitches, and we have one more chain left in there, and we're going to put four double crochets into this one. So, one, two, three, four, and as you can see, just ignore the tail, that kind of brings us around, and then we're going to double crochet up here. And we're gonna put 15 double crochet stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, and as you can see, there's one more chain left there, and we're going to put four double crochets into that one. So, one, two, three, four, then we're going to slip stitch into the top of that first stitch we made. That is our first round. Now our second round is gonna go all the way around where we just did, and we're going to put just double crochets into that. So we're gonna chain three, and then it's going to be 38 double crochets. Now if you're shy one stitch or you messed up, like and you're missing one stitch, like that's not really a big deal. Um, I say just keep going. If you're missing like a bunch of stitches, then okay, maybe consider restarting. But 
that's my philosophy on things. Like, if you miss a few stitches, that's not the biggest deal because we're going to do a lot of hand sewing later and that'll kind of cover it up. Now that we're back at the start, we're just going to slip stitch into there. Alright, so this is one of our eyebrows, and you're going to want to repeat this one more time, so we have two eyebrows. Perfect. Alright, the next piece is the nose bridge, and you're just going to do one of these. The rest of them you have to do two, well, except for the nose, but you'll just have to do one of these, so chain 12, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, then chain another three, one, two, three, then we're going to double crochet eleven back into this chain, so one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, and then we're going to do four double crochets into that very first stitch, or chain, my bad. So one, two, three, four, and then we're going to crochet 11 all the way back up this chain. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then, then we're going to put four double crochets into that last one. So one, two, three, four, then we're going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three and we're done our first round and then we're just going to cro double crochet all the way around. So one, two, three. All right, after that round, we're going to slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. And then we're going to weave in our ends. That last round was 30 double crochets, if anyone's wondering. That will be all in the written pattern, by the way. So if you want to show your support, buy the written pattern, because this is a lot of work that I'm doing. <laughs> all right, that is our nose bridge. The next thing we're going to do is the lips. So we're just going to do a slip stitch. And then we're going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. Then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and then we're going to double crochet up that chain. And we are putting seven double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, then we're going to double crochet four into that very first chain. One, two, three, four. Then we're gonna double crochet seven up the chain. One, two, We're going to double crochet four into that last chain here. One, two, three, four, and then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that chain, and then chain three, one, two, three, and start our second row, which is just crocheting around the edges like we did the last bunch of times, and we're going to double crochet 22 all around the edges, just like we've done for the past bunch of times. <laughs> And slip stitching into the top here, and we're just going to weave in our end. Here we go. And you're going to repeat that a second time so you have two lips, upper lips. You know what I mean. All right, the next thing we're going to do is the scales. So you can either do a magic circle or you can chain three like me and then slip stitch into the top of that chain three. Totally up to you. Oh, great. And then we're going to chain three, double crochet eight into the circle. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, and then slip stitch into the very first stitch you did. And then we're going to chain three again, and then we're just going to keep double crocheting around. So double crochet eight around for row two. Then slip stitch into the top of that first chain of all. You can see it's kind of forming. Then we're going to do one more row. So there's three rows in total. So chain three and double crochet eight around the whole scale. And we are going to slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. 
and then weave in our end. So this is what one scale looks like, and then you're going to repeat that another five times, so you have six scales in total. I usually do six, or I do four, but here are six of them. The eyelids, we're going to do a foundation double crochet stitch. Now, there's a lot of tutorials that explain it better, so if you're kind of confused, I'd recommend looking up some additional sources that go slower. So I'm going to chain three, so one, two, three, and then I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook into that first chain. And then I'm going to yarn over, pull through, oh jeez, it's okay. And then instead of continuing to double crochet, I'm going to yarn over, pull through one, and that is going to be our first like stitch, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last one. So as you can see, it kind of gives you like a double crochet foundation. So I'm going to yarn over again, insert into that first stitch that I just made, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that gives us two of them. So we're going to repeat this so we have 10. So that's two. Three. Four. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and that is going to be our eyelid. We need four of these. The foundation double crochet is like a little too complicated for you. That is totally all right. You can always just chain 10 and then double crochet into those 10 chains. Totally up to you. This is just what I prefer to do. Do whatever is easiest for you. And I like to weave in my, my ends immediately um, because that's just like a good habit. enough. Now you want to repeat this three more times so you end up with four of them. There's one, two, three, four eyelids. Next thing we're going to do is the nose and we're going to chain two and then we're going to half double crochet into that first chain. Instead of doing a magic circle or whatever, you can just crochet into that first stitch. So I'm going to crochet five, one, two, three, four, five. So that is five half double crochets in there and then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. Then for the second row I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to half double crochet in one, then increase in the next one half double crochet in one, then increase in the next one, half double crochet in one, and then increase into the next one. That gives us, and slip stitch into the top, there we go. That gives us this little nose. The last thing we're going to make is the teeth, and here I'm going to do a slip knot. Then I'm going to chain two, and like the nose, I'm going to yarn over, and I'm going to insert all my stitches in that first chain. Then I'm going to put four in there, so four half double crochets. So one, two, three, Four, and then I am going to slip stitch into the top of that fourth one, 
and I'm kind of flipping it inside out because I always crochet backwards but anyways then I'm going to chain one then stuff one of the crochets crochets into there one of the half double crochets and then go around two three four and I'm going to shove another half double crochet into that not really a stitch so I guess it counts as an increase so we have a total of five on our second row and then I'm going to slip stitch into the top one there and that is our tooth you're going to want to repeat that five more times okay there we go there's my six teeth last thing we're going to do is an eyeball and so here I'm going to do a slip knot chain three then I'm going to slip into that first one or you can just make a magic circle totally up to you chain three two, three and then I'm going to put 12 double crochets into this magic circle or hoop whatever you want to call it There's one two three four Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Then I am going to slip stitch into the top and leave in my end and you're going to want to repeat that one more time so you have two eyeballs so the eye detail is totally up to you what you want to do i'm going to show you two different types so if you want to do just like a split one down the center i just pull my yarn through and i essentially just sew back and forth and i leave the tail out so i can knot the tail to it I go into the same stitch from top and bottom. Then there we go, from the back I just tie it off. And then I end up with this eye, which is pretty cool. I like it. Now, the swirly eye that I've done on a lot of my dragons is a lot harder to do. If you're not good at hand sewing, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but I'll show you anyways. I insert my yarn through here, and then essentially I sew it down by hand as I go into the center with just some red thread. And I'm just going to sew it down by hand. And as I go around the eye, I just kind of hold the yarn in place. Then when I reach the end, I get my yarn needle and I just insert it where I want it to disappear. There we go. I'm just going to finish sewing it down. tie this off I'm going to 
tie these off. I'm not worried about weaving in these ends because um, they're not going to, the back is going to be facing something else, so you won't even see it at all. And that is how I do the swirly eyes. All right, so let's get started with assembling the actual piece. And the first things we'll need is our completed baseball cap that's covered in crochet. You can follow my tutorial on how to do that. I have a video and a pattern out. So um, definitely do that, it's necessary. We also need some stuffing, um, not a ton. I would say this is probably enough or more than enough. And scissors matching needle and thread in the same color that you're using. Let's go over all of our pieces. So six scales, we need one nose, we need two eyes, six teeth, we need one nose bridge, two lips, we need two large horns, we need two small horns, we need two eyebrows, and then we need four eyelids. That is all the pieces we have. It's 28 in total, plus two, which is the two pieces that make up the baseball cap, so I guess that's going to be 30 in total. If you're having trouble like keeping track and following along, I would really recommend purchasing the pattern that I made for this. Anyways, okay, I guess we'll get started. I'm just going to move all of these to the side. The first thing I like to do is sew the lips on because I find that gives it the most structure. Now, these two little guys are the lips, and usually I stuff like a tiny bit into the lips, um, or upper lips, I don't really know what to call them. Um, and then I add more if necessary before I sew it shut. So usually I like to start with one side and they stretch quite a bit when you sew them on. So I'm gonna start right about here I kind of stretch them out as I sew. So I'm just stuffing more in here. Just like, I'm not stuffing it like super full, but just enough where I feel like, hey, that's appropriate. I'm sewing all the way around this front lip. Then I'm going to bring my needle to the front and I'm going to get started on this second one. And I can't give you instructions on like what specific stitches to sew to. You kind of have to just hold it up and eyeball it and figure it out for yourself. And I know that isn't like the most helpful, but that's just, <laughs> that's just how the process works. You know, you just kind of have to hold it up and figure out where it's going to go. And as you can see, I was like, oh, I sewed it this far down on that one. So I'm going to try to do the same for this. And I'm just adding more stuffing where I think there needs to be stuffing. And then once I have these two little <laughs> lips that look weird. Um, I'm just gonna sew them together like this. Just gonna fold them together.
and that is how we get the front lips. Of course you can go in with your needle and thread and kind of clean it up, but you know, as you can see I'm mushing it kind of around. The next thing we're going to add is the nose, and the nose looks really similar to a lot of the teeth, so just keep that in mind. Don't accidentally sew a tooth. <laughs> that would be kind of funny, but I just stick it, I plop it right in the center. I'm just going to bring my needle and thread all the way up, and I'm just going to sew all the way around. I'm just going to tie it off and then bring my thread to the back of the nose. And now I'm going to put the nose bridge on. And it kind of goes in like this. You can do a skinny nose bridge or like a flat nose bridge, totally up to you, whatever you think is best. You can also pin the pieces to the head and then sew around that. I just kind of like holding it. Um, and eyeballing it so usually when I put stuffing in sometimes I just like to go like this and it kind of forms a hot dog shape and I'm just starting at the very tip of the nose bridge and I'm gonna work my way around so here we go I'm sewing it to this upper lip part right here and then I'm gonna work my da way down off the upper lip and onto the actual hat. Now I'm just sewing all the way down. I'm not sewing into the baseball cap, I should have clarified. I'm just sewing on that surface layer of crochet, which is way faster. <laughs> And also, you can manipulate it a bit better. So now I'm onto the nose bridge, and I'm sewing it onto the nose bridge. Here we go. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to tie it off. Oops and we are going to get started on the eyebrows. The eyebrows are like my least favorite part. <laughs> I don't know why. Now you can stick the baseball cap onto like a head form to help better get the shape, but I also understand that not everyone has a head form. And also they're like $11 at Michael's now, which is like kind of much, but you can still do it with just a baseball cap. I always do it with just a baseball cap anyways, because it's like, you know, it's already a pretty sturdy shape. So I'm just gonna stuff mm, my first eyebrow and then I'm gonna stuff the second eyebrow too just to get it ready. And I just put a little bit of stuffing, like not a lot at all. I'm kind of rolling it together. For this one, I like to start here and then kind of go like this, if that makes sense. Um, and I also find stretching it over my knee while doing this part is a bit easier because, you know, you have a sturdy base. But I'm just going to show you without it. So I don't start like right at the very end, if you've noticed. I like to start a few stitches. Ooh, oh no. <laughs> I like to start a few stitches down and I find I can just like tidy that up later when it's a bit easier. So here I am, I'm just going to start sewing. I want to angle my eyebrow like that, so I'm going to kind of hold it as I stitch it in place and then readjust when necessary. Also, I'm sorry if you can hear cars drive by, but I live on a busy street and my studio light is so, oh my gosh, it makes the room so hot. And so I have to open up a window or else I'm going to boil alive. And if I don't open up a window, then I have to turn the air conditioning. And the air conditioning is louder than a window. So, you know, it's a it's a lose-lose situation. Um, 
Anyways, I'm just gonna keep sewing the bottom part of this eyebrow on. And then once I hit like a point like here, I like to bend it down and sew the eyebrow kind of downwards just to give it a little more shape. You don't have to do that. You could do crazy eyebrows if you'd like. Ow. Oh, I stab myself all the time. You can do wiggly eyebrows if you would like. If that is what your heart desires, you could do it. You know, this is, you have free will. You can do whatever you want. Um, you don't have to copy me. I am just here to show you the steps for you to achieve what you would like. All right, so I've done the bottom half. Then I'm gonna start sewing up the top. I like to squish the end of the eyebrow and sew it kind of squished down a bit just because um, I like to add some details later. So I'm squishing it a bit. I don't like the bottom part to be stuffed as much as like the furrow of the eyebrow. And, <clears throat> excuse me, as I kind of wrap around here, whoop, I am going to start spreading the eyebrow out and making larger stitches. Here we go. Not larger stitches, um, making this part larger and stretching it out. So here we go. Let's kind of see. I'm going to stuff it a bit. Like, that's way too much. Like, if it just looks like a balloon, then, like, that's too much. The key is to not overdo it with stuffing because it's so easy to overdo it. I'm going to keep sewing. Till I get to the front. As you can see, this kind of dangling, we've got that going on. And I'm just gonna sew these two together and kind of tuck in the ends. I'm starting from the side now and I'm just stitching this together to make it seem like seamless, if that makes sense. The goal isn't to have two chunks next to each other like you know what I mean the goal isn't to have like two lumps like that the goal is to sew them together so they get super flat I hope I'm explaining that properly all right do you see that look how nice that is it's nice and flat and it looks flush and this looks like continuous kind of Mistakes are a lot more obvious in white. I thought I'd let you know. And I'm working in white this time because I thought it would be easiest to see it on camera, which I, I guess I'm not wrong. So I've got my first eyebrow on, and the eyebrows are my least favorite because, like, getting the second eyebrow is just not fun, <laughs> in my opinion. So I usually start from the top side on the second eyebrow. Don't know why. It's just something, it's just a habit. And I'm going to sew it flush to this top part and I'm going to kind of line up where this one hits on the crochet so you notice it's like okay at about this point it's two rows in so I need to sew it like that um, I hope that makes sense So it's like, oh, it goes this way, so I need to bring it up. Okay, I'm looking at it again. It hits this point at about here, so I need to sew it to about there. There is no blueprint on how to do that, like do this. You just need to eyeball it and sew it down and hope for the best. <laughs> um, all right, so this kind of curves in at about here. So I'm gonna hold it in place as I sew it in. This end hits about two rows, two and a half rows up. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm sorry if the angles aren't the best, but it is difficult to sew this um, at, at, at like the specific angle to get the best um, <sighs> the best video, I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right, now time to do the underside. And I notice there's about two rows before it goes like that. So I'm gonna look on this side, two rows, and then it goes back like that. Okay.
I think that looks about right. Does it? I don't know. I think it does. Now we have the first part of our eyebrows done. Now there's another part of the eyebrows that I'll show you how to do. I take the back part of the eyebrow and I kind of pinch it with my fingers and I insert my needle at the very end and I'm going back and forth. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I went through like halfway through the stitches is where I was sewing. And when I pull it together, as you can see, it kind of like shapes the back half of the eyebrow. So I'm just gonna pull it, knot, and then go back down. So go through like this, this, There we go, that is how we get the sharp point of the end of the eyebrow. And you just repeat the same on the other side, just make sure you count how many stitches you do so you get the same amount. Now, remember when I was like, oh, doing the eyebrow is my least favorite part? Just kidding, it's actually the horns, and I totally forgot about the horns, so you need a lot more stuffing than I told you. So, I'm just gonna stuff the horns. You wanna stuff the horns a little more than the eyebrows because they're a half double crochet, like they can take a little more stuffing. Don't skimp out, but also don't overfill them. Now this time I actually do recommend you to stretch this over the back of your leg, but again, we don't have that luxury with the filming setup. I like to put the horns a little bit higher, kind of like this, and I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep an eye out for like where this kind of sits. Now the second horn goes like this. So okay. I'm gonna put it like right there. I always do big one first because that just makes the most sense. Um, so I'm keeping an eye out. I'm going to end it like right there and then we'll have to eyeball the second one. Now I tend to stretch the base of the horn out just because I think that's what looks better when it's sewed on. If you sewed it on just like without stretching it out, it may look a bit hot dog like, which if you're going for that, it's totally fine. That's your creative decision. And I notice it's like very close to the center line, which is totally fine. A lot of the times the horns are like extremely close to each other in that aspect, because we also need room for the scales. So that's all right. I'm just gonna bring my needle over here and I'm going to try to eyeball it. As you can see, like the center sometimes doesn't even line up with this. And I guess you could call that human error, but that's just like, that's just craft for you. So I'm getting started on the second one. I'm keeping in mind where that's sewn on. I'm not doing like the best job sewing it on because I'm going to go over it again. So we have our two horns kind of attached. They're really floppy right now, <laughs> which is okay. Sometimes this hat specifically, it has a softer interior, so it doesn't have as much structure as the other hats, which is totally fine. Um, it doesn't really affect it too much. It just makes it a little more difficult to sew on. Now we're gonna do the smaller horn and I just stick the smaller horn flush against that one. And then I'm just gonna sew it around same thing kind of stretching the base a bit just so you have like a sturdier feel to it and it doesn't get the uh, 
get the hot dog effect. There we go. Now, once we have our two horns, we want to sew them together. I usually go about four stitches up, so one, two, three, or four rows up is where I do it, but um, you can always just do three. I think I'm just going to do three. It's totally up to you. And I just hold them together and go like this. When I go through the center, I just go back and forth like that and then pull it tight. And I always run out of thread in the most inconvenient times. So as you can see, I kind of push them together and I'm sewing down like this. Boom, they're all together. To get that split horn, I just kind of <laughs> just separate them and squeeze them, and then they just kind of hold that shape. You can keep them more together if you want. Um, do whatever you like. This is your dragon. As you can see, I kind of overstuffed this one, but it's really not the end of the world. Move the stuffing around until it looks less overstuffed. Right, time to do the second one. It is time to do the scales, and usually, lately, I've been doing just two scales because three scales is really kind of, really kind of pushing it, in my opinion. So we can just kind of see is three scales a bit much? No, it's fine. It really depends on the dragon. Totally up to you. So I'm gonna start with my first scale, and I'm just gonna sew it to the hat. Um, now I'm keeping an eye about how low or high I want it. Um, we're going to do two scales together like this and then we're going to sew the last one on top like that. But I kind of angle it in like this just so you hide those seams a bit better. And I think that looks about right. I like to sew through both layers of the scale. Then I'm going to do it again for the second one. Again, kind of angling it still. Now, they're kind of flopping around, so we're gonna sew it down to the hat. I'm gonna sew up a couple stitches, up the scale, and I'm gonna flip it around like this and just sew it down. Then I'm going to go through this one again. And then this one is going to be sewed on like that, and we're going to do the same thing. But of course, I'm out of thread, so I need to tie it off. Kind of hold this here, and I'm just going to sew it down the same way I did with the last two going through both layers. By both layers, I mean the fr front layer and back layer of the scale, not both layers of the hat. Now I'm just going to go up the side of the scale, just a couple stitches, and then I'm going to sew the back down to the scales behind it. I'm going up again through the scale. Then we're just going to sew the other side down. There you have it. Three scales. And as you can see, this bottom stitch starts at after exactly one row. So that's where I will start this one.
right, the scales are done. Both sides. The next thing we're gonna do is sew the eyeballs down. These are my eyeballs. Whoa, they're a little bit nuts. And then we have our eyelids that kind of just like calm it down. <laughs> they look a little less nutsy if I put the eyelids on. See, they look a bit better. All right, the first thing I like to do is sew the eyeball down and I don't match the thread because nobody's gonna see it. So, I like to start in what would be the inner corner. And I just sew it all the way down. I try to center it, but I try to keep the this part of the eye close to here because if they're out here, then like, something just looks wrong. All right, now that guy's down. I'm just gonna go for it and sew the eyelids down. I like to do the outsides. I don't actually sew the insides down. And that'll make sense in a second. I'm just gonna angle that and I'm gonna sew it. Sometimes you have to sew it to the nose bridge and that's what ends up usually being the case. Um, because that's what just sits the flattest. Oh my god. Oh, I'm like in the worst mood filming this. I just really hate filming tutorials. All right, so not to complain about everything, but I don't get to do it in my own comfortable spots. I have to sit down with the studio light and sweat my ass off. All right, now I'm just, oh my gosh, if this end of the thread gets caught again, I'm gonna lose it. So, I'm just sewing it, and sometimes you have to sew, you have to sew it to the bottom cap part here, like the brim, and that's okay, it happens. Sometimes it just works out that way. Oh my goodness, this thread is like way too long. Whatever. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see. I'm kind of curving it a bit like that. And the eyelids are way bigger than the eye, and that's just a stylistic choice. You can make them shorter if you want, but I find that just what looks the best. All right, I've got the top of my eyelid. Again, I'm not, I don't sew this down because I find it just like looks n more, I guess, natural and less weird if I don't sew it down. So I'm starting with the corner of this and I'm just gonna sew it. I'm sewing it here. Oop. Here we go. All right, here we go. Looks pretty sick, right? I'm not gonna lie. Kinda, I, I really went off when I created the dragon eyes. Okay, my one worry about this tutorial is that a bunch of Chinese manufacturers are just going to use this tutorial to produce more of these dragon hats. I'm so sick of these dragon hats. Like, it's, it was something so unique and fun to myself and now it's just, ugh. Anyways, I'm gonna do the same thing, just sewing it down.
This next part is totally optional, but I like to do it sometimes. When my dragon's eyes are a little bit far apart, I just like sewing right here. So I'm just gonna insert my needle right across here. So you can see, it just makes his eyes a little closer together. Totally up to you if you prefer whatever you prefer. Um, sometimes I don't even do it because it looks fine the way it is. And I'm just gonna sew all the way back again. That's good. Okay. Let me fiddle. You can fiddle with things. I think that looks good. Alright. Now we have our teeth. As you can see, they're looking a little molar-ish. And to fix that, well, you can do it like this if you'd like. But I just insert my needle here in the base of it. And then I'm just going to sew the top shut as tight as I can. that happen? I don't know how that happened. And then I'm going to fold it again across and just sew again a couple times. And I find that makes it more of like a tooth shape. I don't know. Um, now I'm going to sew up to the top of the tooth and then I'm going to attach it to the dragon. I usually put the mouth like this, and then I figure out, oh, this looks good here. Um, and your goal here is to get it symmetrical with the other side. This is so hard to do on a table. Whatever. The first one, I like to put like right under the corner of the lip here. Once I have the tooth um, secured down, I'm just going to knot it, and then I'm going to repeat the same thing for the next tooth. I usually I usually do six, so I do one in each corner and then two here. I find if I put four, that's just like a bit too much sometimes, like especially on a shorter brim hat, like I think four is just too much. But again, totally up to you. So I have my second tooth and the goal is just to get it symmetrical. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. I don't usually follow like where my stitches are, kind of like I do with the top side of the head because I find it's a little more subjective down here. There we go, there's our second one. Now, when I sew the next two on, I like to do it on the back, um, just because I can gauge where the center is for the last one. But, you know, do whatever you want. You have free will. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball the distance between those two for the third one. Alright, last one. And we are finally done all of the sewing aspects. That is what our teeth look like. This is what our dragon hat looks like right now. So this next part is totally optional, but I know a lot of people really like the mustache. And so for the mustache, you're going to need some wire. I'm using 19 gauge wire and I'm going to double it up. Um, you also need wire cutters. Do not use your kitchen scissors on wire. You're gonna mess up your scissors. So make sure to invest in a pair of wire cutters because they come in pretty handy. Or ask your dad, mom, parent, neighbor, everyone has wire cutters. And the last thing you need is hockey tape. You can use masking tape, but I prefer to use hockey tape because I find because it's like technically kind of fabric-y, it like bends really well. Um, and I also have a lot of it because I used to play hockey. I drew out this little mustache. This is what I use. If you would like this exact one, this is available for purchase with the pattern. So once you get the pattern, you can 
print the pattern out and it'll be the exact size you need. If you just want to eyeball it, go for it. It's whatever, whatever you'd like. Since you're working with wire, um, just be careful. You know, don't poke yourself. Don't poke yourself in the eye. We're not using a ton of wire and usually you snip off these ugly bits, but I honestly just leave it because no one's going to see it and we're going to be covering it up later. You also need um, a glue gun. And I, okay, so I got my BFA, which is a Bachelor of Fine Arts, and every prof was so anti glue gun. And I totally agree. You know, you shouldn't be using a glue gun, especially if you have, like, if you can sew and stuff like that. But in some cases, you do need a glue gun. Like, for this, there's no other real way that you can, like, glue it, you know? Sometimes the only option is glue gun. And if it works for something, then it works. You won't see any glue gun bits, so that's kind of that's kind of the goal. So as you can see, I'm just trying to shape it to the mustache here. Does not need to be totally perfect. All right, now I'm gonna chop off the end. There we go. I'm gonna double it up. It's totally optional to double it up, but you know, we've got a ton of wire. We might as well. This part is kind of funky, so I'm just going to grab one, and I like to shove it through the side of the nose. And I like to go kind of under the nose, I don't really like to go through the nose. So here I am, I'm going under the nose, and I'm just jamming the wire through and kind of guiding it with my finger. And then I'm going to bend, guide the rest of the wire through. And that is how I get it like that. Just gonna add my second one and I'm gonna follow the same route that the first one went now that there's kind of help here. Perfect. I have my hockey tape here and I just like to cut little strips and I'm just gonna tape these together. So it would, you know, the knockoffs I've seen just glue directly on top of this and we're not going to glue directly on top of the wire we're going to wrap the wire in some hockey tape first this is something i figured out by myself by the way so as you can see i'm just cutting it and then i'm angling it a bit and then wrapping it around and to get that kind of feathered shape i like to wrap more around the base i try not to wrap it directly around like i'm doing right now unless it's the base because i'm gonna go over it but I want this base right here to be thicker. Okay, there we go. And the nice thing about the tape is you can still bend the wire. And once you put the yarn over top, you can still continue to bend the wire. And this is what I found works best for me. Um... That's why I wouldn't recommend sticking this in a washing machine, or I, d I don't recommend to stick any of my work in a washing machine. I think you should wash it by hand. Um, but this is the kind of piece that you should spot clean, and then if it's just so necessary you have to submerge it, then okay, I guess you submerge it. But like, by submerge it, I mean put it under water. Um, there we go. So we've got that going on. And sometimes when I'm like, oh, that's thick enough, you can just chop that off. You don't have to keep wrapping it. Now, if you're using, like, oh, the cool thing about hockey tape is that if you have, like, if you're making a black dragon or something, you can buy hockey tape in black. You can buy hockey tape in literally any color you like. You just have to go to a hockey store or a sports store, and you get a lot of it. You're not going to use the whole roll the first time. Wow, 
Or I guess you could paint it after if you like you could paint it after. I don't know. Totally up to you. Do whatever you want. I'm just here to teach you. When I get to the end, I kind of just stretch it and fold it over like this and twist it. This one still needs a little bit of work. Here we go, let's stretch it. And the one thing I like about hockey tape is that you can pull it and it sometimes kind of pulls the creases out, sometimes. Other times it doesn't, but like, yeah, there we go. I think I need to add a little bit more right there. Also, I like to use a different pair of scissors for sewing, cutting, and also tape. These are my sticky scissors. You can see there's so much tape gunk in it. But I don't want to accidentally use my bad scissors with like good fabric or something like that. So it's nice to keep things separate. All right, this is how we're looking. Next thing we need is our yarn and our glue gun. And I'm gonna add a glob of glue to the to the back right here. Oh, my glue gun's on high. I don't know why it's not working great. And I like to just mush a piece all the way down there and as far back as I can, like out of the way, if you can see. I'm just mushing a piece back there. I'm gonna add another piece here. Oh, it's too much glue. Oops. And I do it behind the nose instead of in front of the nose, so you can't really see it. And then from here, I'm just going to add a bead of glue up the side. I only like to work by like a few centimeters at a time so the glue doesn't dry on me. And then now I'm just wrapping. How did my hair get there? Okay. I'm wrapping pretty tightly around this. All right, I'm gonna add some more glue. There we go. Now we're going. And I'm just gonna keep wrapping. back looks good so far and then I'm gonna add another bit of glue so you can see I'm not covering the whole thing in glue and I'm not using like a lot of glue just enough to keep that in place there we go Oh, I realized you can't even see that. Oops. So, as I get to the end, I'm just going to keep wrapping it tightly. And then I'm going to kind of stick glue on... Why is that coming out? Okay, I'm sticking some glue on 
the yarn itself and then I'm going to twist it kind of back on itself and if the glue isn't too hot I kind of squeeze it in front between my fingers and once it is dry I'm just going to snip that off sometimes I need to touch up the ends oh that was way too much oh no That is the second part of the mustache done. You're, yeah, you're done. You can, you can finish up. Also, you can bend it whichever way you really want to. I tend to keep it in this position. You can also bend it back, bend it forward a bit. You can do a swirly, you can do whatever you'd like. You made it to the end of this video. Wow, that is so impressive. You should leave a comment right now. Say, hey, Alex, I made it to the end of this video. Leave that comment, I would like it. I want to know if you actually made it to the end of this video because it's like pretty long. It's very instructions based. So I'm curious to know, did people actually do this? Um, if you have a finished piece and you would like me to see it, you can email me. I will definitely respond to like emails. Uh, DMs don't work as well, like Instagram DMs. Eh, I, don't, I don't usually get them. Me or tag me on Instagram. I also check my tags. So I would love to see it. I'd love to see what you guys make. This tutorial is done. Congratulations. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.